if you FaceTime someone from out of space? So I'm going to try and explain this in the most basic of basic terms that I possibly can, so try and not get confused. So I'm sure you all know space is very confusing, time and everything just barely exists in space, like it's weird. For instance, someone hundreds of millions of light years away on a planet, if there are people there and they look through a telescope to Earth, they would see the dinosaurs because of the speed of light and that's how fast it moves. Now for this example, I'm going to relate it to Interstellar. So if you've seen Interstellar, you know the film Miller's Planet, where you know every tick is like seven years on Earth or something like that, so a second there is like seven years here on Earth. So obviously time distillation is a huge thing and it is extremely confusing, but let's do two examples. So if you were to FaceTime someone on Miller's Planet from Earth, you would basically just see a frozen frame. Every couple of days or few days, you might see like a tiny little bit of movement in the frame, but that is about it. Now light would basically travel to Miller's Planet, but you wouldn't really be able to communicate because this would basically just be like frozen in time moving jaggedly every couple of days really. So if you imagine this person who is on Miller's Planet is there for three hours, to you on Earth to watch that whole three hours would take 23 years. 23 years because that's how the speed of light works, time distillation, I'm, I'm done. Now the question I've got and that you're probably wondering is if someone from Miller's Planet was looking down to Earth or FaceTiming Earth, how would that work? Well basically everything would probably be in, in like two times speed. So you would just see everything flashing by like years and years and years going by when you're there for like three hours. But yeah, I don't know. It's confusing me and it's mad. But hit that follow button and I will see you in the next one. Imagine a bunch of aliens coming down expecting to see a bunch of cool, vicious dinosaurs, but then only to be greeted by boring humans. Was Jesus's actual birthday April Fools? And is this why everyone has made this day a day of fools? Let's talk about it in this article. This is tracing back the ancient origins of April Fools Day. So on April 1st every year, people around the world celebrate April Fools Day, sometimes called All Fools Day, uh, where everybody does pranks and makes a fool. So I've heard that Jesus was born on April the 6th, not April the 1st, but listen to this. According to the biblical theory, the 1st of April is the day that Jesus was sent from Pontius Pilate to Herod and back again, a journey which has also been associated with the old expression of sending someone on a fool's errand. So supposedly Jesus was sent from Pontius Pilate to Herod in the time that they were going to condemn him for crucifixion or to, to die for doing nothing wrong. He did nothing wrong. He was accused. So one didn't want to judge him. So he sent him to the other. And then they sent him back to Pontius Pilate. So if anything is associated with Jesus and being a fool, I'm not going to celebrate it. Comment below what you think about this. 2024 and people still celebrating Easter. I guess no one told you the real meaning behind the white rabbit, did they? All my spiritual people, please stop going down the rabbit hole. The rabbit hole is a dead end. Hollywood know the truth of what's really going on. That's why they always put these white rabbits in movies with children. How about the Matrix? Follow the white rabbit. How about Alice in Wonderland? Follow the white rabbit. Why do they have spiritual people following the rabbit hole? If you keep following this rabbit hole, you're going to go deeper into the underworld. And don't you know who's waiting for you in the underworld? The moon god Isis always uses rabbits to deliver messages to the underworld. So yes, the rabbit is the messenger for the moon deities. Anytime you do a moon ritual or a moon ceremony, you are doing these rituals to Isis. Do you even know who Isis is? Isis is the moon goddess. Every month, people do a sacrifice to Isis. She eats your energy when it's a full moon. Then she sit back and wait till she's hungry again. Then she eats your energy for the next full moon. This has been happening for a long time. Back in ancient days, our ancestors always followed the North Star if we needed directions in life. But Easter is connected to the East Star. So we're following the North Star and they're following the East Star. Easter, everything that's happening right now is connected to the solar eclipse that's coming next week. Anytime there's a solar eclipse, it looked like a black ring. 
in the sky. Once you understand the spiritual knowledge and start connecting the dots, the solar eclipse is a black ring. The black ring represents a celestial wedding. Someone is getting married in the spiritual world. Let's connect the dots. A black ring, solar eclipse, black rings. We are going through a wedding, but who is getting married? Easter do not mean the resurrection of Christ. They misled you once again. Jesus is not being rebirthed, but Osiris is. Osiris is the king of the underworld. This is a ritual for him. Isis is the one that's going to bring him back to life. Remember, Isis actually married Osiris. Remember, the moon goddess only have energy to make things manifest because we don't understand what's going on. Every time we worship the moon, our energy goes to the moon. They use it to make things manifest. They were bringing Osiris back to life. The king of the underworld. Remember, Osiris was cut up in 14 pieces. Isis got these 14 pieces and brought him back to life. Do you understand what's going on? Not to mention the Ten Commandments is coming out real soon. They play the Ten Commandments every year, don't they? But this year it will be different because we are going into the solar eclipse. There's a reason why they want everyone panicking. This is going to be a real spiritual event. All my spiritual people, please stop going down the rabbit hole. The rabbit hole is the underworld. And Osiris is waiting for you because Osiris is the king of the underworld. This is a New Year ritual. I know they want people to believe New Year's is in January. That's a lie. New Year's is actually the spring equinox. This is a ritual to bring everything back to life, even demons from the underworld. This is the truth behind Easter that nobody's talking about. Now I knew y'all was waiting for this. Easter originated from a Mesopotamian fertility goddess named Ishtar that was often associated with eggs. Get it, eggs, fertility, and it symbolized the new life and rebirth. In ancient times, they used to decorate eggs in honor to Ishtar. By the way, they used to decorate them in blood and give gifts to each other during the spring equinox. Also, it was a celebration of the conception of her son, Tammuz, who coincidentally was born on December 25th. They used to also celebrate this holiday by females going into the Ishtar temples and having a mass clapping session with any man that walked through. Now, what if I told y'all that the Bible already told us not to worship this goddess Ishtar? Turn to Jeremiah 7 and 18. As you can see, the children used to gather wood, the men would set the fire, and the women would bake cakes in order to honor this queen of the heavens. And they poured out drinks to other gods, which provoked and made God angry. And y'all see right here, Ishtar, the queen of the heavens, her primary title, the queen of heaven. And let's honestly think about it. What does the resurrection have to do with Easter eggs and bunny rabbits? Ishtar, Easter, is it making sense now? How do y'all feel about Easter? Do you feel like people celebrating good or they celebrate bad? And spring do make sense to represent a new year because everything is blooming and starting off fresh. sad the fact that we see all the marketing for the sweets instead of all the marketing for the valuable assets in which most people overlooked because they assumed on what they didn't know which in the long run would have been the better outcome free hershey bar or a free bar of silver two plus two is four right which one you picking comment below and run that video free hershey bar or a free bar of silver
Which one do, would you like? You want the Hershey? Go ahead. It's yours. If you don't want it. Which one would you like? Just take one, please. Whatever you want. Okay, I'll take this one. You take the Hershey bar? Yeah. Oh, you rather have the chocolate. Okay, well, take it. It's free. Whichever one you want. Yeah, thank okay. you. Okay, I'd rather have a Hershey bar. You'd rather have a Hershey bar? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, All right. Well, like a thing. Well, it is a thing, but you'll figure it out someday. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm busy. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, free Hershey bar or free silver bar? Uh, Hershey. Oh, okay, well, it's yours then. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you as well. Take one of these, please. No, no, thank you. Just take whichever one you want. I don't even know what that one is. You don't know what this is? No, a brick of hell. Uh, it's a brick of silver. No, well, I'm okay. You just take one of them, whichever one you want. I don't want either. It's a chocolate appreciation day. Okay. You want the chocolate bar? Sure. What are you going to do with the What are you going to do with this heavy bar of silver? It's just too burdensome to carry, I guess, right? Uh, that and, like, use it as a doorstop. A doorstop? Yeah. I guess. Or paperweight? Yeah, something yeah. like that. You got too many doorstops laying around. Which one would you like? I would take the chocolate bars. Well, you can go ahead. It's yours. Okay. No, just one. Just one. Oh. Just one. Oops. Yeah, okay. okay. Thank you very much. Pawn shop. Oh, it's pawn shop, yeah. If I were to offer you one of these for free, which one would you take? Um, that looks like a chunk of gold, so I'd have to take that, but it's probably just nothing metal. I can see it's no good. You should take the Hershey's. Well, you, you want the Hershey bar? I'll take the Hershey bar. Well, okay, it's yours. Thank you. Take it. Woo! <laughs> Close one. Why? Okay. What's up, dude? Well, it's a 100-ounce bar of silver. Cut it out. Yeah, so. No, really? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah, dude. Is it really? Yeah, too oh, bad. I'm losing you. <laughs> yeah, right? You get to keep the chocolate bar? You get to keep the chocolate bar. Oh, man. Okay. Like That's <laughs> okay. For real? Yeah, it is. Is it really? It is. Oh, my. Thanks, man. People out here hungry, they ain't even thinking about that silver. But that show you how a lot of people are too distracted to even realize what's been presented. There was also an eclipse back in October as well, 10-8. There was an eclipse. I stared at it. I watched it. I watched it with my own eyes. Nothing happened. You know, they always do these things. They're trying to feed on your energy. That's what it is. Think of your energy, your aura, as currency. And the eclipse is feeding on your aura and your energy as a currency. That's what it is. So instead of you paying attention to the eclipse, watching the eclipse, and having that download go into your body, you're put into a fearful state where you need to stock up in case something goes wrong. With the whole thing of like the, the fear, is if something were to happen, it, it is stocking up and all the other stuff, you probably won't even matter. You're in a situation, you know? Like back years ago, I was at NIU during the whole thing that happened with the sh and whatever else. They turned off people's phones. It was crazy. They actually turned off people's phones so that we couldn't communicate amongst each other. So if you think about what the situation is, uh, if things actually were to happen, you know, they, they, it's a very different scenario. And I just say that, and I'm not trying to present any fear whatsoever, because I've realized that all of these events are just to harness your aura and your energy. That's what it is. From the flashlight. I don't get it. I don't get it either. How am I just seeing Put the it back. circle? How are we seeing the shadow of the tree? I don't get it either. From the flashlight when it's the sky behind the tree. And it's so close. The shadow is so close. And why is there a stop on? point at the end of my flashlight when it's pointed at the sky? Why isn't it going on further? Like, are the, are the, the clouds really this? that low? Don't cuss. I'm sorry. It doesn't make any sense. Why? You can see the shadow. Maybe I'm just dumb and I just don't get it. You see There's a fucking man. shadow in the sky. You see the shadow. <laughs> Let me see if I can yeah, zoom. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. There's a shadow. And like, I don't get it. You're going too fast, honey. Why? Okay. Can't we see the circle of light. I don't feel like I've ever seen that before in my life. I don't think I have either. Not in the sky. It just kind of disappears. You know. I wonder if I was standing in front of the house if I could see this. Cause you know those party lights? Like the party lasers and stuff? Yeah.
fan. Come with me. Okay. Next point I found extremely interesting. Official documentation claiming the Earth is flat and that mathematical equations used in aeronautics assume a flat non-rotating Earth. Check these out. This is a CIA document sourced from the Russians and it's titled Dissertations Defended in the Scientific Council of the Institute of Physics of the Earth. In the document, it mentions a near sun and a formula that is derived on the assumption of a flat earth. This United States Army document from the Army Research Laboratory on the propagation of electromagnetic fields over flat earth mentions transmitters placed on the surface of a flat, idealized earth. In one of its figures, it also mentions flat earth. In another Army Research Laboratory document, it depicts a diagram showing a flat earth crepuscular rays that we mentioned earlier, and a near and localized sun. Here's another document on projectile flight dynamics, and the equations in the document assume a flat Earth. Here's a NASA document on the derivation and definition of a linear aircraft model. Introduction. This report details the development of the linear model of rigid aircraft of constant mass flying over a flat, non-rotating Earth. NASA document on the SR-71 Blackbird and its top speed of 2,193 miles per hour. Maneuvers depending on a non-turbulent atmosphere and a non-rotating Earth. Federal Aviation Administration document. Equations of motion assuming a flat, non-rotating Earth. Another NASA document. A rigid aircraft flying in a stationary atmosphere over a flat, non-rotating Earth. An aircraft model for the AIAA Control Design Challenge. Flight dynamics of a rigid aircraft flying in a stationary atmosphere over a flat, non-rotating Earth. NASA Technical Paper 1285, Flat, Non-Rotating Earth. A NASA Georgia Tech project in conjunction with the U.S. Air Force. A model frequently used is that of a flat, non-rotating Earth. But you have to admit that a lot of these flight calculations are based on a flat, non-rotating Earth because they come right out and say it. You know how big the largest dog in humanity is? Spring Dog 8 centimeters, Chihuahua 9 centimeters, Yorkshire Terrier 10 centimeters, Poodle 10.7 centimeters, Shi Tzu 11 centimeters, French Bulldog 13 centimeters, Pomeranian 14 centimeters, Cabba Dog 14.5 centimeters, Welsh Corgi 14.9 centimeters, Great Long Dog 15 centimeters, Boston Terrier 16 centimeters, Beagle 27 centimeters, Bulldog 30 centimeters, Timid Dog 30.5 centimeters, Nuclear Dog 31 centimeters, Labrador Retriever 31 centimeters, Miniature Doberman 34 centimeters, Pitbull 34 centimeters, Dalmatian 49 centimeters, Bull Terrier 51 centimeters, Bull Soup Dog 43 centimeters, All Dogs 55 centimeters, Siberian Husky 57 centimeters, Zombie Dog 57.1 centimeters, Labrador Retriever, Scout 58 centimeters, Rottweiler 59 centimeters, Golden Retriever 61 centimeters, German Shepherd 62 centimeters, Scooby Dog 65 centimeters, Doberman 71 centimeters, Lynn Hoof 73 centimeters, Malinois 73.1 centimeters, AO Dog 75 centimeters, British AO Dog 81 centimeters, Great Single Dog 86 centimeters. So, the question comes, what kind of dog do you like? Do you have one at home? future, we are going to look at social media, the way we look at cigarettes, the 
ability to scientifically realize that there was measurable harm done, I think it's going to be something that a massive light bulb goes off. And I think it already is. And we already have this sense that something isn't right. The environment doesn't feel good. We know it's been linked, especially for teen girls, depression. I think once all of the data comes back, we're going to really view this last decade as the dopamine generation, the way we view our parents' decade as the nicotine generation. It is so unfortunate that we all have to be in this massive group chat, social experiment that isn't necessarily going well. We are starting to realize that it isn't necessarily healthy to have a bunch of people rate how you look or have filters that can create the Eurocentric version of you. And that's what we subscribe to. And so I think we're going to really transform social media and put limits and guardrails. And that's actually something that I look forward to. I can definitely understand what she's saying. I can see sometime in the future where they're even doing background checks to access different sites, like a search history check or something. Levitation is real, but not that. No, I'm talking about quantum locking, superconducting levitation. This. It looks like magic, but with enough physics, we can explain it. To make this happen, we need a type 2 superconductor. And a type 2 superconductor is a material that, if you get it below a certain temperature, it behaves in a very special way. In particular, it has no electrical resistance, but it allows some magnetic field to pass through. This is distinct from a type 1 superconductor, which has the same properties about electric resistance, but it never allows any magnetism to pass through. By the way, that's called the Meissner effect, and I'll make a video on that later if people are interested. So the first thing to note is that they do expel most of the magnetic fields, meaning that they have a magnetic field internally that cancels out the external magnetic field, and so you end up with a repulsive effect. If this was all that happened, when you put a superconductor over a magnet, it would just fly off because it was repelled. But the type 2 superconductor allows just a little bit of magnetism through, kind of like in this picture. This is a phenomenon called flux pinning. Basically, depending on the strength of the magnetic field that the superconductor is in, it will allow a certain amount of flux tubes through it, a certain number of lines of magnetic field to pass through it. An important fact is that the location of where those magnetic fields can pass through are fixed in space. This is an image of where the magnetic fields pass through in a certain type of superconductor. And so because the amount of magnetic field that passes through the superconductor is fixed, if it were to move around, those magnetic flux tubes would have to move around outside of their flux tubes. But as I just established, they're fixed in place. So not only is the magnet repelled by expelling most of the magnetic field, it's actually fixed in place. It levitates because if it were to move, those flux tubes would break. And this is how you get superconducting levitation, also known as quantum locking. One of the higher producers of superconductors is Taiwan. Missing people before and after. Riker Webb before. After. Amanda Aller before. After. Brenda Heist before. After. Bo Bird Doll before. After Jamie Kloss before After So I see that early JC Lee before After Baby Holly before After Lula Cora Hood before after What I find photo of her Kayla and be home before After Look at that shit dog Sabrina hurry hurry come Holy shit dog it's a fucking meteor It's a fucking <laughs> meteor dog Holy shit where'd it go? Oh my god Oh my god, that was fucking sick. Dog, that's aliens. That's aliens. That's aliens coming to the fucking Tyler. What? What Tyler? Tyler. What the fuck is that? Tyler? He, he realized it was normal. What the fuck is going on? They're going sideways. They're going sideways. They ain't even following no more. Hey, look at this green dot on my camera, Tyler. Look at the green dot. What the? Fuck? Look at the Man, green dot. That's crazy. I see it. Tyler, what dot. the fuck is going on? They're oh, standing well, there. They're about. hovering there. Look, they're red. They're red. They're red. They're red. 
They're red. What the fuck, dude? I got that Those shit on video. Those ain't meteors, bro. Look, no, that no. one's flying sideways. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Tyler. Tyler. How would y'all feel out there? Holy shit. What is going on right now? I'll probably be what the Oh like my fuck. god. Oh my god. Oh my god. They're zigzagging. Yeah, the dude, the what sky. the fuck is going on right now? That is a meteor. Sabrina, get your ass over here. That, that is no a meteor. fucking. Oh, man, I'm hiding behind. Get, get over here. Get over here. Oh dog. my god. Where'd they go? Oh my god. It, it was like a. Like a. Oh curtain. my god. It was like a curtain at first. That was cool. Dude, that's motherfucking alien. What the fuck is that? <laughs> that is fucking aliens, dog. How many days after the, the light? How many are we like three days after? Remember the, the Phoenix light? Oh my oh. god. Oh my fucking god. What the fuck was that? So I'm guessing they down in Arizona yeah, somewhere. Shoes on. Tyler, like, these things are flying, what bro. What the fuck is that in the sky? It's flying. Look, that one disappeared out of nowhere. Pink, right here. Dude, look at the fucking formation, Go bro. Ahead. She's inside. Oh man, now it looks like an alien one. What the fuck was that? ...to a call of a man driving eastbound on 275 with a Watusi bull in his passenger seat. He needed a ride. The bull needed a ride. He was offering gas money. There is a secret brain fluid which is produced in the cerebrum in the center of the brain. This oil is the Christ oil or Christos oil in Greek. This oil is produced in the colostrum which is at the center of the brain next to the pineal and pituitary gland. Once it's produced in the colostrum, it then goes to the pineal and the pituitary glands. The pineal being the electric charge and the magnetic being the negative charge. Pineal gland is Joseph in the Bible, and the pituitary is Mary, the honey and the milk, the sun and the moon. The pineal gland sends its positive charge down the pingala, the pituitary gland sends its charge down the eda. This are the two serpents, symbolized on the medical symbol. It then reaches the sacrum, or the sacral plexus. This oil then feeds the tree of knowledge, which is your nervous system, and the tree of life, which is your cardiovascular system. In order to climb back up Jacob's ladder, the 33 vertebrae on the stairway to heaven, you must retain your seed, meditate, and have an alkaline diet, which is electrical food like fruits and vegetables. They rub this in your face with Santa going down and then up the chimney. This is symbolizing the Santa claustrum, making the present, coming down the chimney, feeding the systems in the body, and then rising back up to the pineal gland, activating the pineal gland. It's also the same with Jesus. When King Herod wants to kill Jesus, he goes from Nazareth to Jerusalem, and then back to Nazareth. This is the Jordan River, the Holy River. This symbolizes the spine going down and then up. The pineal gland is the center of consciousness. It is the I am, it is the awareness. You are not the physical body. You are the soul which is inside of the pineal gland. These strange skulls were found by archaeologists in the Caucasus. Discovered in a chest, marked with the insignia of a German occult organization known as Anna Nerba, a think tank organization who hunted down relics. Judging by the shapes of the skulls, the beasts were large, horned creatures. They appear to be missing mouths, having just small holes in the sides of their heads. Who these skulls belong to and what the Ananerba were looking for, remains a mystery to scientists. Time. Noon, the male counterpart, and now Nat, the female counterpart, 
represent the primeval waters themselves. They symbolize the formless, boundless, and chaotic watery abyss from which the cosmos emerged. As embodiments of these waters, Noon and Nounet are considered to be the source of all life and the potential for new creation. Amun, the male counterpart, and Amounet, the female counterpart, personify the hidden or invisible aspect of the primordial waters. They reflect the mysterious and concealed nature of the forces that existed before creation. In later periods of Egyptian history, Amun became one of the most important and powerful gods, eventually fusing with the sun god Ra to form Amun-Ra. Kuk, the male counterpart, and Kauket, the female counterpart, embody the concept of darkness. They signify the state of obscurity and stillness that characterized the universe before the emergence of light and order. Kuk and Kauket highlight the transition from darkness of the primordial chaos to the light and order of the created world. Ha, the male counterpart, and Hauhet, the female counterpart, symbolize infinity and boundlessness. They represent the limitless expanse and potential of the primordial chaos from which the ordered world arose. Ha and Hauhet emphasize the vastness and the unending potential of the waters of noon, which eventually gave birth to the cosmos. Eventually, the Ogdoad came together, yielding to some creative compulsion. And to explain what happened next, here's a passage from Egyptian mythology, a guide to the gods, goddesses, and traditions of ancient Egypt. Obeying some primitive instinct, the eight came together to make the place, the primeval mound or the island of flame, or object, the primeval lotus or the cosmic egg, from which the creator sun god emerged. This made the Ogdoad the fathers and mothers of the creator. Alternatively, creator gods such as Amun, Ptah, and Thoth were viewed as calling the eight into being. Here, then, the creator was his own ancestor, the father of the fathers and mothers. The amphibian and snake forms of the Ogdoad were thought of as mating in and fertilizing the primeval waters. An image of the waters alive with the glutinous frog spawn may be what the Egyptians had in mind. In some sources, the Ogdoad seemed to be the forces that the Creator had to subdue before the work of creation could begin. In others, they simply seemed to die after bringing forth life. Therefore, the primeval mound can be viewed as both the place of creation and the tomb of the Ogdoad. What's interesting about the various versions of the ancient Egyptian creation myth is that they aren't in direct conflict with each other, expanding through amalgamation rather than clashing. The Ogdoad and the Enyad are both groups of gods in ancient Egyptian religion that are associated with creation myths. While the Ogdoad represent the primordial aspects of chaos and the waters of noon, the Enyad represents a group of nine gods led by the creator god Atum, who is associated with the Heliopolitan creation myth. The connection between the Ogdoad and the Enyad lies in the transition from chaos to order in the creation of the universe. It could be anything. Somebody pulling a shut string. Until you jump out and I see a clear image of it, I don't believe it. I know a lot of girls that'll be in heaven.
It looked like a giant bacteria. Oh. I know a couple people houses that might need that. A roach exterminator. I definitely will be holding it in my hand. And spiders, nope. See? Make me want to check my shoes. Look, no, nah, dude is tripping for real. A new technique can make your internet 1.2 million times faster. Researchers at Aston University were able to achieve 301 terabits per second, which is like transferring 1800 movies in a second. And they did it by tapping into the forbidden E-band. Bands are different wavelength ranges assigned for different applications, like what your cell phone uses versus a submarine. Fiber optics are what carry the world's data, mostly from the bottom of the ocean. And they carry information in the form of light by reflecting off the walls. Higher frequencies like the E and S bands have shorter wavelengths, so faster data transfers, but they don't do a great job penetrating physical objects. <laughs> Because of this, E-bands haven't really been used in commercial systems. And you might have noticed this little peak here, which is known as the water peak. Fiber optic cables are vulnerable to molecules from the environment getting in. Those molecules can physically get in the way and mess up this reflection. Most companies use the mid to low frequency C and L bands because they have a higher tolerance for those obstacles. So your data isn't lost. To overcome the E-band issue, researchers built two new devices. One that helps amplify the signal over longer distances, and another one that monitors the channels and makes adjustments. The best part is these devices could just be added to the optical cables we already have. The internet has a lot of traffic and it will get busier. So we need options like making what we already have better. I feel like it's about time because sometimes when I be searching stuff, I expect for the site to pop up mid-stroke. But that requires some brain frequency monitoring and I ain't cool with that. But I think we might be too late. The way that they are gearing up for this eclipse is peculiar it's creepy and we need to talk about it welcome back to 5d mystery school let's get into it massive explosions may be visible on the sun during the april 8th total solar eclipse so they are saying that you can see solar flares that could shut down communication matter of fact let me show you the article Huge explosions from the sun may add a great show to solar eclipse. Hmm. It's all thanks to a series of massive explosions that one solar physicist says could be visible during the lengthy daytime phenomena. It will be fully over western New York just after 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That will move across the nation. The total eclipse of the moon covering the sun could coincide with corona mass ejection, CMEs, which happen when massive particles from the sun are hurled out into space speculates Ryan French of the National Solar Observatory in Boulder, Colorado. Double solar flare sees sun wake up weeks before total solar eclipse. What do they mean by the sun waking up? Uh, make sure you keep an eye out for my next lecture. The devil comet will be a heavenly co-star. Bro, nice choice of words. Heavenly co-star during the eclipse. Here's what to know. Now remember, Lucifer rays was put into the jabs and the main goal of the jabs was to make it to your pineal gland, the optic thalamus where Christ returned. So the devil comet will be a heavily cold star. It's coded, bro. So in this first paragraph, they're just saying that a lot of people are going to be watching the eclipse, but a few people are going to be looking off to the side, gazing at the devil comet. Worth noting, Jupiter will be at the 18th degree in Taurus on the day of the eclipse. If I were you, I'd brace myself for a major earthquake. And I've warned before, but just want to warn y'all again. 
Now, I made a, another video talking about how the ship crashing into the bridge was coded um, for premonition of a civil war. Now, fire erupts at Lincoln Memorial, leaving one seriously injured as hazmat team caught in. From the Library of Congress, Abraham Lincoln's presidency. Abraham Lincoln was elected president in 1860 and again in 1864. His first inauguration on March 4th, 1861 featured an unprecedented amount of security around the president-elect spurred by the approaching onset of the U.S. Civil War. The film Civil War releases in 15 days. One plus five is six. Abraham Lincoln in Dramatria is six. Again, this is coded and pointing to a civil war. This is noteworthy. Strongest geomagnetic storm in years lights up the sky. This happened on March the 25th. Now, after this happened and you looked up at the moon, the moon was brighter, wasn't it? The sun has been bright as hell, hasn't it? Well, the geomagnetic storm, what it did, it is it charged up the moon and the sun. So that's why the moon has been brighter. And that's why the sun is bright as hell right now. Three days ago, geomagnetic storm severe enough to bring northern lights to California. Well, let me tell you, if you see the northern lights over California, that means there's a lot of geomagnetic interference taking place. And what could you do with all that geomagnetic energy? Earthquake. Whenever harp goes off, the sky turns a lot of different colors. That is um, similar to the Aurora Borealis, right? Harp creates any weather condition, earthquakes, tsunamis, hurricanes, etc. Amplitude modulation. Okay, so I was doing a little bit of scrolling last night on TikTok on the Clock app. And I noticed this creator uh, mentioned something about the NASA Serpent Deity Program. So let's dive a little deeper into what this is. NASA APEP mission, to, bro, to mission to launch three sounding rockets in October. That was in 2023. Now we're in 2024. This won't be the only APEP launch. The APEP rockets launched in New Mexico will be recovered and then relaunched from NASA's Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia on April the 8th, 2024. When a total solar eclipse will cross the U.S. from Texas to Maine, the April launches are farther from the eclipse path than the, for the October annular eclipse, but will present an opportunity to measure just how widespread the effects of an eclipse are. So they're going to launch sounding rockets into the moon's shadow during this eclipse. That's what the APEC mission is, okay? Again, it's all coded and if you've been following me for a while you've heard me talk about APEP before so I already know the students of 5D Mystery School especially the advanced students over in Patreon when they heard this they already knew ancient Egypt many solar eclipse myths revolve around the duality of light and darkness good and evil as you might imagine that puts a rather nefarious spin on the sudden obstruction of the midday sun thus ancient Egyptian cosmology gives us the apep the cosmic world serpent the apep serpent deity program by NASA is referring to this okay apep embodies chaos and death making the monster a natural adversary for the sun god Ra. the serpent pursues Ra as the sun god pulls the burning sun disk across the sky lighting the world every so often apep nearly consumes the sun disk resulting in an eclipse luckily Ra and the defenders aboard the, his sky barge always manage to fight free of the serpent's shadowy coils now this is a similar story in hinduism ancient mesopotamia norse mythology you can pause to read all these and ancient persia and it always involves a serpent eating the sun ancient china also had a belief that a dragon ate the sun and that's why they experienced an eclipse from Wikipedia, Apep was the ancient Egyptian deity who embodied darkness and disorder and was the, thus the opponent of light and ma'at, order and truth. Ra was the bringer of light and hence the biggest opposer of Apep. Now, ma'at, order and truth, represents Libra. This eclipse in Aries will be opposing 
the south node in Libra, Ma'at, order and truth. And of course, the solar eclipse is going to take place in Aries and Baphomet or Satan represents that energy of the ram. Notice how they have the fire on top of his head. Aries is cardinal fire. Side note, you know how important the cardinal is because the cardinal houses, the cardinal winds, cardinal in the Holy Roman Church is a senior member of the clergy of the Catholic Church. So Ra was the bringer of light, hence the biggest opposer of Apep. Worth mentioning, Apep is the descendant of Neith. Neith is, she is the terrifying one, right? Was an early ancient Egyptian deity. She was said to be the first and the prime creator who created the universe and all it contains, and that she governs how it functions. She was the goddess of the cosmos, fate, wisdom, water, rivers, mothers, childbirth, hunting, weaving, and war. So here are some ancient Egyptian depictions of a pep. You can see here, they're trying to fight a pep off so he doesn't consume raw. Take a look. And the symbol you see above a pep there, that's a symbol for Neith. Now, this eclipse will definitely cross some very potent ley lines here in the United States. You can see the path of totality here. Now, I should mention the moon shadow will touch Serpent Mound in Ohio. That's appropriate because you see that red uh, slither going across the NASA symbol. Yeah. Yeah. A pep represents the Duat. The Duat was the region through which the sun god Ra traveled from west to east each night, and it was where he battled a pep, who embodied the primordial chaos which the sun had to defeat in order to rise each morning and bring order back to the earth. It was also the place where people's souls went after death for judgment, though that was not the full extent of the afterlife. Now, the solar eclipse is taking place on April the 8th, 2024, which is a two-day in numerology, and a pep in Gematria is two in simple English. And since I'm running out of time here, so much more to say, but the last thing that I'll leave you with is just take a look at the solar eclipse, right? The way it looks. You could say it's symbolic to the Eye of Raw. I might have to come back and revisit this last uh, thing that I'm going to leave you with, but I did a video a couple years ago about the Alice experiment from CERN, and now CERN has the White Rabbit project. Oh yeah, and on April the 8th, CERN is going to be firing proton beams. Thanks for watching. That's the safety precautions they're taking with those. I'm good. Predictions of all time, part one. So we all know by now that the Simpsons are literally time travelers and they've predicted so many things that it is not even funny anymore. Now we've got predictions from the Simpsons, of course, other time traveler people, and one of the big ones, Baba Vanga, who if you don't know was like a 90 year old mystic who died in the 90s, has predictions for the next 100 or so years with an alarming accuracy rate of over 85%. So today we are gonna be talking about the Simpsons, of course, cause you know, and they have predicted so many things. If you don't know, I'm obviously gonna speak about quite a few in this series. But this one is pretty crazy as well. So, on the 1st of November 1990, The Simpsons broadcast this episode, which was about a three-eyed fish. Literally, the title of the episode was, Every Fish Has Three Eyes. So, in this episode, they went down to a power plant called Chernobyl. Now, in The Simpsons, near this nuclear power plant that they went to, they found a fish with three eyes. Like, fully mutated, with three eyes. Now let's fast forward over 20 years to 2011, where at the exact same place, the Chernobyl power plant, in the water surrounding it, we found an actual three-eyed fish. Now this is 100% real. There's been loads of theories for years about, you know, would what happened at Chernobyl actually cause mutations in the animals, and I guess it did. Now yes, of course, this could be a crazy prediction, but also it could be just pretty good guessing because how likely is it we're gonna find, you know, a deformed species in an area like that, which is covered in radiation and waste? Pretty damn likely. Likely, right but as I say we're starting off lightly in this series this is like not even the bottom of the iceberg yet mate so yeah let me know your thoughts hey like I said before if you throw out a thousand predictions a couple of them gonna come true but who knows they might can till the future
What is that? Oh, a fat dog. Not the dog on the donkey. Not the dog on the donkey taking a ride. <laughs> <laughs> Morbid Facts, Part 227. During a concert in 2014, Kanye West suddenly stopped the show and refused to continue performing because two members of the audience wouldn't rise to their feet. What Kanye failed to realize was that one of the fans had a prosthetic leg while the other was in a wheelchair. There's a rare genetic mutation that causes bones to become eight times denser than normal. It can allow people to walk away from car accidents without a single fracture, but it comes with the trade-off of being unable to swim. Idaho is the only state in the U.S. to specifically declare cannibalism illegal, but it's a legitimate defense to have committed cannibalism under extreme life-threatening conditions as the only apparent means of survival. World War II fighter pilots often blacked out during turns since high G-forces caused the blood to pool up in their legs. But British ace Douglas Bader didn't have this problem since his legs had been amputated after an accident, resulting in him becoming one of the greatest fighter pilots in RAF history. Crazy things caught on camera in this Airbnb. These girls were here for a bachelorette party, and in one of the bedrooms were these twin beds. They noticed there was this, like, trap door thing underneath the floorboards. They're going to open it up, and normally you would think this is just, like, storage or something, but this crazy lady, she's very brave, I would not do this, is climbing down into this, like, little cellar cave area thing that's underneath this room where the two girls were staying as she gets down there there's not anything stored down here it's very dark dingy dusty she's going to peek around the corner right here and she's going to take a photo of something and uh she's gonna bring it back up uh yeah, to see what the heck this is but it didn't look right it was just kind of something tucked along the corner and right here you're going to see this is the photo that she took if you zoom in right here that is literally a human skull underneath the bed of where they were staying in this airbnb Break the simulation and the internet with me with wild and sublime thought experiments like starting off with debunking info that I agree with. That's right, I commonly see ideas I agree with, but the supporting reasons are trash. Moving on. Investigating thoughts like, why all the talk of living on the moon, Mars, and other places? If they were serious, you would think that they would start with trying to build underwater domes and live underwater. Especially since some people are already doing it and it seems to lengthen your telomeres. I mean, think about the cost. You'd have to build domes anyway and transport all of that to Mars. Rocket ships, fuel, whatever goes into all that story. Anyway, because of ocean life and the resources we have here and the minerals and things that are actually in the ocean, you probably could convert to free energy. Unless USOs or some other breakaway civ just didn't want us there. Speaking of breakaway civilizations, have there been three exact copy and paste Andrew Dawson giant cover-up stories on social media? Some sort of PSYOP campaign or preconditioning, maybe? Random thought that connects back with water later, like rust, technically corrosion, is the mold of the metal world. Like some sort of natural process of being unmade by man, unmanufacturing itself. Plus there's the cool link. In Spanish, the word mojo means mildew and rust. Plus rust can be caused by mold, aside from just acting like mold. And mold can also be caused by water. Diving right back into water, which is what the earth is made mostly out of, does the earth grow? There's actually a theory called the expanding earth theory. And it's the idea that everything here on earth grows, whether you're talking about an egg or people or animals or plants or fruit or anything that grows here on earth grows. So why not the idea that the earth grows too? Though I think some would like to have us believe it's shrinking. The way the lore into the smart city is happening, it kind of reminds me when I glance into the future of when I look back at the past of looking at the orphan train era and all these confused people not really sure where they are or what they're living in. So does that mean we're the predecessor version and we'll be rounded up into the new old world, new world smart cities? All this digital dystopia and the effects of it kind of makes you want to escape and think about thoughts like the ice wall and what might be beyond it or the fact that the ice wall might actually rotate. And it's circular, kind of based on the stars and the rotating of the planetarium above us. And at certain times, there are cracks that you can get through to the worlds beyond. Back to the breakaway civilization concept. Lots of ancient texts depict totally different worlds with totally different creatures, sizes of everything, like a completely different world. If that's not beyond the ice wall, 
Maybe we've already been lured into one of these things, and that's why this world is so different than all of our ancient texts. Again, this is just a for entertainment thought experiment, so keep flowing. Let's further expand the thought that they want the gray alien model to be the future humanoid model. Hairless, short, weak, sedentary, no muscle, radioactive, tech-grade automatons. Basically like just brain beings bred to just function as a brain, an organic suit for a brain activity. Kind of like Krang from the Ninja Turtles. Why not infuse that with some OI or AI? Demonoid hybrid being. Beings that are just powerful brains with telekinesis powers. Kind of actually does sound like demons the more I think about it. Or certain kinds at least. The disembodied soul brain type that wants to harvest all your energy. And radio frequency like sends you bad signals all day so you feeling like... Anyways, this is where the experiment gets interesting now. Let's combine the underwater thought with the gray alien thought. And do you get an octopus? These supremely highly intelligent beings are literally thought to be aliens from another planet by some scientists. They've been known for escaping from sealed jars by opening them with their tentacles, solving puzzles, frequently outsmarting captors, and they've even broke their way out of aquariums and made their way back into the ocean. They've been known to shoot water jets to shut off light switches. They have mimicry ability to change colors with flashing patterns and shapeshift. And each tentacle has its own consciousness to go along with its three hearts and nine brains and double memory system. So, yeah... What was Organism 46B in Antarctica anyway? Some sort of super version of one of these things. And having been in the presence of one of these octopus beings before, I did feel a high intelligence crafty power at work. Some sort of mind being. So maybe it's not just dolphins that have some form of sentience or maybe more than what they seem. Speaking of, do you know about so far? It's the underwater internet that dolphins and whales use to communicate and they can send signals for miles. Thousands of miles actually. So many mysteries the oceans hold. Speaking of water, life super mysterious and also possibly sentient element gives life and destroys and a whole other experiment we could do on this topic alone. But we'll close with an ancient reset scenario legend of the world being destroyed once by fire and once by water. If you look at both Nephilim incursions, you'll see the first time they were messing with the gene pool, it was creating flesh beings, which is why the world was destroyed by water. A theory I had was one of the reasons the world would be destroyed by fire the second time, if you think about it, is because these same parasitic consciousnesses are going to interface through robots, kind of like the Transformers. So the world will be destroyed by fire to save it and start it over. Unless the AI robots create something that destroys them, kind of like we did to God, and the cycle continues. Or robots' weakness is plastic. Yeah, it's not just plastic clouds, there's plastic rocks too. Plastic everything. Plastic intelligence, terraforming and taking over the world. The irony that would be if plastic was the thing that saved us from the AI robotic intelligence. Or the thing they created. Or maybe octopuses will come to the rescue. Or... Alright, this is getting out of control. Stay out of strange waters till I see you next time. 10 Creepy Animals That Lives in the Mariana Trench 1. Telescope Octopus Imagine getting touched by one of those tentacles. 2. Frill Shark 3. Argyropolicus Hemogymnus Look like all platinum and silver. 4. Zombie Worm 5. Goblin Shark like bar, 6. Black Angler 7. Chimaridae kind of like a ghost. 8. Benthicodon Strange man. 9. Barrelai 10. Dumbo Octopus